بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شابتر لينير مومنتم and when we say linear momentum to um, distinguish it from angular momentum because <coughs> linear momentum is the momentum due to uh, moving uh, in a straight line collisions it's the interaction of two objects or more um, interacting while um, moving in a straight line so that's linear momentum and uh, collisions so we start uh, with this uh, question uh, a 60 kilogram um, archer stands at rest at rest so that means he's not moving on a frictionless ice and fires a 30 gram arrow horizontally at a certain velocity 85 meter per second so he gave us the mass and he gave us the speed with what velocity so uh, he's uh, talking about velocity so we need speed and direction. Uh, does the archer move across uh, the ice after firing the arrow? Nuzboot ya Ahmed. But with, uh, with a little uh, more details. So first of all, we know that uh, linear momentum and we will come to this in more details, but just to summarize, linear momentum, we gave it the symbol P, and it's a vector. It is a vector. Linear momentum is equal to the mass multiplied by the speed. Uh, sorry, not the speed, the velocity, because it's a vector. It is a vector so that is a momentum now after he released the arrow the arrow will have a momentum will have a momentum and that momentum of the arrow we'll give it a symbol p arrow is equal mass of the arrow multiplied by the speed the velocity of the arrow so he is asking what will be the velocity of the man so the man will move in the other direction so the man will have uh, momentum mass of the man multiplied by the velocity of the man and to understand why we have if we have a, a, a change of momentum to the right we must have a change of momentum to the left we will see uh, soon well if you look at it in terms of uh, force and um, we consider the force is internal so that means you can apply every action has an equal and opposite reaction and in a few minutes we will see that by applying the force law we will get to the momentum to the linear momentum uh, conservation law so let's just uh, do it first and then uh, we will see in details how we reach uh, to this conclusion well momentum and it is linear to distinguish it from uh, angular 
momentan is conserved linear momentum is conserved and we know that uh, the concept of conserved when we talked about uh, chapter 7 chapter 8 mechanical energy is conserved total energy is conserved so now linear momentum is conserved so what's the meaning of conserved how we write it in uh, mathematical terms well if it is conserved then the change in total momentum must be equal to zero no gain or no loss Yusuf uh, excellent طيب, how we can write it also well we can write it that uh, momentum total final must be equal to momentum total initial this is another way uh, to write that momentum is conserved طيب, let's solve our um, uh, problem here he shot the arrow to the right what will be his velocity what will be his velocity so let's just apply it uh, what's the momentum total final well it is the momentum of the man plus the momentum of the arrow the linear momentum of the arrow and this must equal to momentum initial total momentum initial what was total momentum initial at the beginning nobody is moving so that means we apply m multiply by velocity when velocity is equal to zero so for the system initially momentum linear momentum is equal to zero so then momentum of the man plus momentum of the arrow must equal zero that means the momentum of the man is minus must equal minus momentum of the arrow طيب, let's put the symbols what is momentum of the man it is mass of the man and multiply by the speed of the, the velocity of the man and that is minus uh, the mass of the arrow multiply by the velocity of the arrow so in one dimension we just try it mass write it mass of the man uh, velocity of the man must equal mass of the arrow velocity of the arrow it means velocity of the man is equal mass of the arrow over mass of the man multiply by the velocity of the arrow we put the numbers 30 gram multiply by 85 divided by 60 and we don't forget the minus sign So velocity of the man is minus and then as your friend wrote it 0 0.04 meter per second
تمام طبعا زميلكم احمد عبده واحمد زياد ام ريدنج ذير كومنتس they have it uh, correctly and they have it very fast um, uh, maybe it will be a good chapter for you because a lot of students uh, are very familiar with the linear momentum from high school so that's good however you need uh, just uh, I went so slow uh, just to, to go into uh, details here the minus sign is important because it's a vector we said it's a vector in one dimension so that means minus means a direction so if the arrow goes from left to right which is positive then the man will go from right to left which is negative Fine. Now let's understand from where we have this uh, 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 conservation of linear momentum. We start from uh, Newton laws. If the system is isolated, then we are talking about internal forces only. So every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the summation of forces, the net force acting on the system must be equal to zero. What is the force is M multiplied by the acceleration. But what is the acceleration? Well, it's the change in velocity with time. So we rearrange our uh, equation and we call this a quantity linear momentum. So that means uh, when we have an isolated system, summation of linear momentum uh, must be equal uh, to zero or change in linear momentum must be equal to zero. The linear momentum of a particle or an object that can be modeled as a particle of mass m moving with the velocity v is defined to be the product of the mass and velocity of the particle so here we are talking about a vector and this vector can be in three dimension so momentum in x is uh, m uh, the component of the velocity in x in y is the component velocity of y and in z component velocity of z and momentum is conserved in the x-axis in the y-axis and in the z axis so what is the relation between force and momentum well uh, summation of net forces uh, acting on the object it is nothing but the change uh, on uh, change of momentum with respect with time so the time rate of change of the linear momentum of a particle is equal to the net force acting on the particle so this is how we define the linear momentum so as we uh, said and everybody uh, uh, participated in that when we have an isolated system nothing no external force acting on the system we have the total momentum is constant that means the change in momentum must be equal to zero the change of momentum that means um, total momentum initially must equal total momentum finally so this we can write uh, it says total momentum initially and this is total momentum finally and 
and uh, we can apply this in the x, in the y, and in the z. In the x, in the y, and in the z. So this is a vector format, and this is components of that vector. Whenever two or more particles in an isolated system interact, the total momentum of the system does not change. Does not change. For energy, system isolated, if there are no transfers of energy across the boundary of the system, for momentum must be no external force on the system. So the uh, uh, net force on the system must be equal to zero, and that is isolated system. So we can uh, put it in a figure like this. We assume that this is the system. So if no external forces act on the system, the total momentum of the system is constant. That means the change in uh, total momentum must be equal to zero. Must be equal to zero. Tayyip, suppose that we don't have an isolated system. Suppose that we have non-isolated system non-isolated system well in that case so we have a net force acting on uh, the system in that case we identify what we call the impulse the impulse and what is the impulse the impulse is the change in uh, momentum linear momentum that is the impulse and we identify the, uh, the, the impulse as uh, we give it I and it's a vector and it is uh, the total um, it's the integration of the average force with respect to a time acting on a non isolated uh, system so we can write impulse is equal force multiply by delta t so in the impulse we will always look for the average force for the average force um, Abdul Rahman said uh, is isolated system impulse is zero that is correct. When we have an isolated system, a uh, change of momentum is equal to zero. That means the impulse is equal to zero. That is correct. And we talk about the average force instead of the instantaneous force. This is the instantaneous force acting on uh, a system. It will um, start small and then it will uh, uh, go up very fast. Uh, can I repeat the impulse part? Okay. When we have isolated system, change of momentum, change of momentum here. This is the isolated. Change of momentum must be equal to zero. What does that mean? That means impulse also must equal to zero. Uh, Abdul Rahman asks, isn't the definition of impulse is the force acting on an object uh, over time? It's an external force acting on an object over time. External force. But when we talk about isolated system, that means net accelerate and net external force is equal to zero. Net external force is equal to zero. So 
So we were talking about, uh, we, we talk about the average force because uh, in reality, when there is an impulse, force will start uh, very small and then it will rise up to a peak very fast and then it will go down also very fast. So instead of talking about the instantaneous uh, force, we talk about the average force and uh, uh, it's the same area basically so this area and this area it's the same uh, area so this uh, area for the rectangle is the same area of um, under the curve so we always talk when we solve problems about the average force the average force and in this situation we assume the average force is constant so when we uh, talk about uh, impulse uh, average force multiplied by time as written here we are talking about constant net force constant net force We will we will come we will come to an example, but uh, let me uh, let me just uh, no 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 for, for friction is not it's not uh, included here. Friction is not included here. We are talking about um, uh, external force or internal force between objects. So let me give you um, an example to clarify that. Allah, suppose there is a ball lying on the ground and somebody uh, come and kick the ball. Somebody come and kick the ball now if you look at the system of the ball only then we can consider um, the kick as external force and we have non-isolated system and here uh, impulse is equal force uh, multiplied by the time however if we consider both system the ball and the foot then um, uh, forces are internal and change of momentum will be equal to zero and impulse will be equal to zero so it's very important to identify your system before you can solve the problem. Do you understand that? Is it clear? So based on, based on how we deal with our problem, how do we identify our system, then we can uh, solve the problem. A free fall object has an impulse as well. Well, in order to have impulse, you need to have collision. When a falling free object will have momentum, but not impulse. Impulse, you need to collide with something. You need to collide with something in order to have an impulse. And uh, also, in order to have an impulse, you need to identify your system. Is it that object uh, alone, hitting the ground, methylan, or hitting the wall? Or it is that you are, your system is the ball, or the object, and the wall?
so uh, impulse when we have change in the momentum due to collision impulse is when we have change of momentum due to collision but as long as the object is moving then it has a momentum impulse when we have a collision or a sudden change in momentum and uh, uh, you need to identify your system as I told you if you are looking at the ball only we have impulse if you are looking at the system of uh, uh, the foot of the player and the ball then impulse is equal to zero so uh, be careful about how you identify your system Impulse approximation, assume one of the forces exerted on a particular uh, on a particle acts for a short time, but it's much greater than any other force. And that's always happen in the impulse. We have a very large force acting on the object in a very short time, in a very uh, short time. So in a non-isolated system, change of momentum is equal to the impulse. And uh, how to identify isolated or non-isolated? Well, based on the problem. Based on the problem. So the change in the total momentum of the system is equal to the total impulse on the system. So impulse is the change in momentum and uh, pay attention impulse is not related um, to time impulse is not related to time impulse is just the change in momentum of that uh, object when there is a collision and there is a collision so let's take our first uh, example, I hope Adil is here. Uh, yes, I'm here, Doctor. Yalla, yeah. clear. Go ahead and read. Okay. Um, in a particular crash test, a car of mass 1,500 kilograms collides with the wall as shown in the figure. The initial and final velocities of the car are initial is negative 15 meters per second and final is 2.6 meters per second respectively as the collision lasts 0 0.15 seconds find the impulse on the car during the collision and the average net force exerted on the car type and then he is asking for two things the impulse and the force so what are the information uh, uh, given for us? Mass of the car is 1,500 kilogram. Uh, the initial of the car is equal minus 15 um, in the I direction meter per second. Exactly, Abdurrahman. That is correct. Exactly, Yaman. Good. And uh, V final is equal uh, plus 2.6 meter per second in the I direction. And he also gave us the time of the change or the time of the impulse. 0 0.5 a second so what is the impulse it's a vector is equal um, change of momentum as a vector so in one dimension we can remove uh, the sign and positive and negative because now we are talking about a one dimension so that means 
P final minus P initial. So what is uh, P final? Well, it is 2.6. Uh, multiply by the mass of the car minus minus 15 multiply by the mass of the car and what is that well minus minus it's a plus so we have 2.6 uh, plus 15, so that's 17.6 multiplied by the mass of the car, and it is 264 zero zero in the I direction, and it is kilogram meter per second. So that is the impulse. طيب, what is the force? Average force. Well, it is the impulse divided by the time. So 26400 zero zero divided by point. One seven six ten to the power three newton. Um, is there a difference? Well, there is a difference between the average total force and the instantaneous force. Let me remind you, the instantaneous force of the collision will change rapidly. Start from zero, it will peak extremely, extremely fast, and it will uh, go back to zero extremely, extremely fast. So we are not talking about the instantaneous force, we are talking about the average. Uh, force the average constant force of the impulse during the impulse or during the collision so that's the difference Allah, he will assume that the car did not uh, rebound. So it hit the wall. So in, in the first situation, the car hit the wall. So as a result, the car rebounded to the right. Now he is talking about assume that we didn't let the car rebound to the right yani the car hit the wall and stuck to the wall stuck to the wall what will be the difference so in other words uh, are we going to uh, create uh, more force or less force Uh, for your surprise, we are going to create less force. So if the car hit the wall and then stuck to the wall instead of uh, rebouncing back, we are going to create uh, less force. And the reason for that, in no, now uh, P final is equal to zero. So that means the impulse is a little bit uh, less. The impulse is a little bit less, so exactly, Abd Rahman, change of momentum is a little bit uh, less. So as a result, we will have a smaller net force acting on, on the car. Um, 
that is uh, that is a sad fact ya ahmed in during a head on collision uh, forces generated is extremely extremely high beyond imagination beyond imagination yani we are talking about uh, 150 kilonewton so that is if you divide that by 10 so that's 150 uh, and uh, two zeros so that's 15000 kilogram 15000 kilogram imagine when you put on a car 15000 kilogram what will happen to the car of or, or if you put on a system or a, on a person 15000 kilogram so usually the accidents involving a head on collision is ex will generate extremely uh, high forces extremely high forces يعني لو الواحد يكلب في السيارة لا سمح الله أرحم مئة مرة بين إنه يخبط حيطة أو يخبط إشارة أو يخبط سيارة واقفة قدامه يعني. And why? Because change of momentum will happen over a short period of time instead of a large period of time. لما السيارة تقلب change of momentum will happen over a longer time. Then when the car hit the wall or hit a, uh, um, a, sta يعني a stationary uh, object. لذلك مثلا when we talk about that, إذا في حدا uh, أكيد يعني some of you heard uh, this story that a person driving at night with um, high speed hit a camel and he died. مش الكامل died, a person died. Because the car was destroyed, although he just hit uh, a camel. يعني الكامل خلينا نقول كم وزنه حوالي ثمانمائة كيلو سبعمائة كيلو مثلاً. والسيارة بتكون ألفين وخمسمائة كيلو زي اللاند كروزر. But uh, the damage will be uh, the damage will be enormous because the change of momentum will have will will happen over a short period of time. طيب here before we continue on collisions in one dimension uh, uh, let me give you a hypothetical situation where students uh, most of the time do badly do badly what's that hypothetical situation suppose that this is a ground and I have a basketball And the distance h is equal to two meter. So I will release the basketball. It will hit the ground, and then it will bounce back. So assuming we lose no energy in the bounce uh, back. Uh, the, call, the the ball will will reach the same height and it will have the same uh, velocity, the same speed, the same speed. Now here is the question: What's the impulse when a ball, when a basketball hit the ground? What is the change of momentum? Exactly, Abdul Rahman, Yaman, uh, uh, most of the students will have the answer wrong. The answer is not zero. No, no, I told you a free fall, during the free fall, impulse is zero. But now, now I'm talking about it collided with the ground. Collided with the ground and it's rebounced back. And as I told you, this is a common mistake uh, between uh, students. You know, they will say uh, uh, impulse is zero, which is not true. Why? Because they look at impulse as a quantity and impulse is a vector. 
impulse is a vector. So let's uh, go through this uh, problem because as I told you, uh, most of the students will have the answer uh, wrong. So let's do it. So we have a basketball. The mass of that basketball and the height is equal to two meter. So we need to calculate the impulse. And also we need to calculate the force, the average force. <laughs> it's, uh, this is definitely coming in the exam maybe I don't know I don't know I can't tell you first of all to calculate the impulse we need to know what is the speed or what is uh, the velocity V final from that V final square is equal V initial square plus 2a uh, multiplied by h correct so we assume and uh, downward is negative upward is positive so that means a v final uh, square is equal to 9.8 multiplied by 2 and that is uh, going down so it's minus 6.26 meter per second Taib, let's calculate uh, here V final let me just in the J direction meter per second so it will hit the ground velocity uh, final will be minus 6.26 meter in the uh, j direction so let's let's assume it it's uh, in one dimension in the y just to get rid of the j meter per second then it will bounce back and what will be the final prime it will be plus 6.26 meter per second so now impulse is equal to change in momentum is equal to the mass of V final prime minus V final as vectors in one dimension we have I is equal to the mass 0.397 and is equal 6.26 minus minus 6.26 so that means we add them we add them so the impulse will be 4.97 and it's a positive sign kilogram meter per second so it's never a zero 
when you have an object uh, rebouncing uh, in a collision, change of momentum is not a zero at all. Um, Ahmed Jad, it must rebound at the same speed. Uh, usually, no, but here for simplicity, we assume it will rebound with the same speed just for simplicity. But usually, you have some loss uh, of energy, so usually, it will rebound um, uh, with a less uh, velocity. But for the simplicity, because uh, I want you to pay attention to this. And uh, when we have uh, uh, um, a collision like this and the object just rebounds bounce back or re rebound uh, back, uh, change of momentum or impulse is not equal to zero. And you saw most of you when he answered, he said zero. Pay attention to this. What is the force, the average force acting? Well, it is I divided by T in one dimension. Four point nine seven divided by uh, point one second. I didn't mention that. Yeah. So suppose that the bounce happen in 0 0.1 second. So here 0 0.1. So the force will be 49.7 Newton. Adil, tfaddali Adil. Yes. So if it hits the ground before it bounces, I believe the final velocity will be zero, and the initial velocity will be negative six point two six. Is that right? Does that make sense? Well, that means that, that means the the ball will not uh, rebound; it will just stuck to the ground. If it is stuck with the ground, then well, as oh. as we solve with the car. Bsir V final is equal to zero, and the change of impulse, Bsir B final minus B initial, B final is zero. Okay, so wait, basically impulse has over a period of time. La, so la, like no, 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 la, la, la. Impulse yeah. is just, aha. Uh -huh. No, impulse is just the change of momentum. We are not talking about time. When we talk about time, we need time to determine the average force acting on the object during the collision. Impulse is simply the change of momentum. No time involved. And... Uh We will talk about time if we need to calculate the force during the collision or during the change of momentum. Clear? Doctor, but uh, can we say impulse is uh, uh, the average force multiplied by the time? That is correct. It's the average force the average external force multiplied by the time. That is correct. That's the impulse. So uh, there's a relationship. Of course, there is a relationship. That's how you define impulse in terms of the external force. But still, okay. impulse is nothing but the change of momentum. Doctor, can I like say that um, the average force here in this problem 
Friday the potential analyst and uh, no, okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, energy is a force is Newton. Energy is joule. So you cannot relate them yeah. without a third a third uh, party. So force is the rate of change of momentum. Force is the rate of change yeah. of uh, of momentum. That is what we were uh, saying. And uh, uh, change of momentum is equal force, external force uh, multiplied by uh, the time. And that happened only, only when we are talking about non-isolated system. If we are talking about isolated system, impulse is equal zero all the time. When net force is equal zero all the time for isolated system. For non-isolated system, that is correct. Change of momentum is equal force uh, uh, divided by time. And uh, force multiplied by uh, time. I just got an idea right, for this question. Yeah. If I use Newton's second law and calculate the force, um, caused by gravity. So the mass of the ball times the acceleration of gravity. So I have the average force. Then multiply that by the whole time interval. Does, does that work? Well calculated. And let us see. Oh, this has to be from a concept. Like, is, is that concept? Yeah. But the concept is not, uh, cannot, you cannot apply the concept because you are ignoring time. Yani the force acting on the ball when it's going down is the same force acting on the ball when it is going up. You are ignoring the time. Uh, what we are talking about is when you have an external force acting on an object due to its collision, then we consider change of momentum and we consider time. Uh -huh. okay. So uh, the concept of energy will not solve our problem here because we are ignoring the time. We are ignoring uh, how fast that change happened. Ta, let's continue. Now let's talk about collision in one dimension. And when we say a collision, most of us will think that one particle will hit physically, hit another particle. And uh, that's not necessarily uh, the case. We define collision as event during which two particles come close to each other and interact by means of forces interact by means of forces so we can uh, for example have a collision um, between two uh, protons uh, and they will never touch each other they will never touch each other and uh, even for friction nothing is touching each other when we when we see two balls for example hitting each other it's 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 not physically electrons touching other electrons, uh, no, it's an exchange between forces, an exchange between forces. So the first type of uh, collisions, we call it perfectly inelastic collision. Some books will call it uh, uh, complete inelastic uh, 
total inelastic collision here we call it perfectly inelastic collision total inelastic collision or perfectly inelastic collision um, it has one uh, quality in after collisions la la billiardo is not total inelastic total inelastic it has one quality that the two objects will stick to each other after the collision if they st is stick to each other after the collision we call it perfect inelastic collision or total inelastic collision they have to stuck to each other after uh, the collision doesn't that happen on the weight of one of them no it does not it does not it does not total inelastic collision always the two objects stick to each other that's how we define total inelastic هلا في another type اللي هو inelastic collision inelastic collision like you can consider when two objects hit each other and they don't stick so that's inelastic collision and then we have total inelastic collision or perfectly inelastic collision perfectly inelastic collision has one quality in both objects will stick together both objects will stick together yeah material of the object and uh, how the collision happened uh, sometimes like uh, yeah sometimes uh, uh, I don't know this year if you are doing um, air table a collision in two dimension I don't know if you do it in the lab or not um, but uh, you can have a magnetic puck مثلاً, or a steel uh, uh, puck and then they will hit each other uh, in elastic collision and then you just attach a velcro to them and then when they hit they will stick to each other so when they stick to each other it's total inelastic collision when they hit each other it is uh, inelastic collision and then the third one is uh, total elastic collision or perfect elastic collision and in that case, uh, momentum is concerned, kinetic energy is concerned. Other collisions, kinetic energy is not concerned. So, in this collision, total inelastic collision, uh, momentum is concerned, kinetic energy is not e change in kinetic energy is not equal to zero so uh, dur uh, during the collision kinetic energy could be less kinetic energy could be more so in ela in elastic collision momentum is conserved kinetic energy is not Allah um, Elastic collision Elastic collision اللي هو هون بسميه في الكتاب عنا change in momentum is equal to zero و change in kinetic energy also is equal to zero يعني in elastic collision in elastic collision we have momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved also. In other type of collisions, momentum is always conserved, kinetic energy is not. They don't lose speed, but they go a different direction. No, this is not 
how we define uh, the elastic collagen. Uh, we define the elastic collagen as m during the collagen, momentum is conserved or kinetic energy is conserved. No, in, in Adel say we have two types of collagens. Uh, no, actually we have three types of collagens. But the book decided to ignore uh, one type. We have uh, total elastic collagen. That's what you see on the screen. Momentum is conserved. Kinetic energy is conserved. In elastic collagen, اللي هو momentum is conserved kinetic energy is not conserved and the third one اللي هو total inelastic collagen when the two objects stick together after the collagen momentum is conserved kinetic energy is not so the only collagen that kinetic energy and momentum is conserved is the elastic collagen So the only collagen that we have. So let me let me just write it here. In other books, in other books, you have three types of collagens. Let me write it here. Three types. We have elastic. In elastic and we have total in uh, elastic so let me just طيب هذا الالاستيك كولاجين مومنتم is conserved kinetic energy is conserved in elastic collagen momentum is conserved kinetic energy is not total in elastic momentum is conserved total kinetic energy is not conserved and you have M1, M2 and you have M after the collagen is equal M1 plus M2 so that means they become one object after the collagen one object so in when you look at other physics books you have these uh, three type of collisions for one reason uh, I don't uh, uh, comprehend why he didn't mention the inelastic collision completely and he just uh, put total inelastic and uh, elastic However, it's good for you to know that there are three types of collagens. Okay. Now, uh, as we said, in the momentum is conserved in the x-axis, momentum is conserved in the y-axis, momentum is conserved in the z-axis. So when we have a collision in two dimension, Momentum is conserved in the x-axis and momentum is conserved in the y-axis. And this will help us to solve uh, problems. It will help us to solve problems in uh, momentum. So let's um, try to solve uh, this problem.
So I will use this figure. I will use this figure and give you numbers and uh, we apply a problem and try to solve it. So uh, here are the numbers. M1, so I will use this uh, example to solve a problem. So uh, M1 is equal 1.5 kilogram, while M2 is equal half a kilogram. Uh, V1 is equal uh, 2 in the i direction meter per second so it's going it's moving from left to right v2 uh, is equal 0 meter per second so it's not moving this object is not moving i will give you um, v2 prime Diamond, when we talk about uh, collision, prime means after the collision. So after the collision, P2 velocity is 2.55i minus 1.07j meter per second. And I will ask you to find V1 prime clear so this is uh, our problem I'm using this figure so uh, M1 was moving M2 was not so this is uh, the velocity of M1 this is the velocity of M2 they collided so M2 went um, down with an angle and M1 uh, went up with a different angle so if I uh, give you the velocity of F2 after the collision I ask you to find the velocity of M1 after the collision so how to to approach it does knowing elastic or inelastic help um, well um, it will be very complicated and the, the book decided to ignore it but in, uh, uh, in other problems of course knowing that the collision uh, is elastic will give you a third equation to solve your problem because once we know that the collision is elastic that means kinetic energy is conserved مش k is equal zero. Change in k is equal zero. يعني total kinetic energy before must equal total kinetic energy after. And this is will give us a third equation to solve our problem. But uh, honestly, the book ignored these kind of problems. And uh, I will not uh, bring such a complicated problem in the exam. I have to stick to the uh, difficulty level of the book and how he approach uh, the problems so uh, a simple problem like the one I gave you very simple I assume M2 is not moving I can make it more complicated uh, to make uh, M2 is moving uh, and then I ask you to calculate uh, what will be V1 uh, prime so how to solve this uh, this uh, problem? Well, I have momentum is conserved in the x-axis. So in x, I have momentum before is equal momentum after. What does that mean? Well, m1 v1 x plus m2 v2x will equal 
m1 v1 x after the collision plus m2 v2 x after the collision momentum is conserved so total momentum in the x-axis after the collision must equal total momentum in the x-axis after uh, before the collision so let us put the numbers 1.5 kilogram multiply by 2 plus half a kilogram multiply by 0 must equal uh, 1.5 kilogram with v1x prime which I don't know plus half a kilogram multiply by v2x prime v2x prime is this one 2.55 2.55 because I know v2 prime after the collision so it's 2.55 Okay, so now uh, I end up with 1.5 V1x after the collision is equal 3 minus 1.275, which is equal 1.15 meter per second. So now I know the x component of um, my vector x component of uh, my vector so time's up so we stop here inshallah we continue uh, next lecture now i uh, i will put for you um, um, a sweet uh, program uh, i found it at the net I'll put it on uh, the content in, in the content of chapter 9. Um, this is uh, what they call a collision lab. You can have a collision in one dimension. You can have a collision in two dimension. And uh, you put the mass. You, you know, you can play with it. You put the mass, you put the speed, and then you put run. So they will collide and it will give you uh, the velocity values it will give you the velocity values it will give you the momentum values so uh, i'll put it uh, in the content of chapter uh, nine inshallah after the lecture so hopefully it will help you to understand uh, collision uh, very well also we are going you can choose to, to have the momentum vector. You can choose to have the center of mass because we are going to cover a center of mass. You can uh, check the kinetic energy value, etc., uh, etc. Et so I'll put it, inshallah, after the lecture uh, in the content. And I advise you to play with it. And you will learn. Uh, it will make things much, much easier to understand. So let me stop uh, the lecture.